Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. Now I continue to be kicked into DIY mode and Patricia is the culprit this time. She has declared it DIY week. She has kicked off DIYs with I think seven other channels and every day this week starting with Tuesday we are partnering with her to do a DIY. There are mason jars, fabric, that's me which is Wednesday, today, wood, thrifted items, Mod Podge, spray paint and felt. So she connects with one of the channels every single day. So I'm going to have her link to her channel in the information box. Please check out the link to see what she's up to today as well as click Clicking on to a playlist that we're going to have so you'll see what all of us have been up to. I'm so ready to get excited. It's not spray paint this time, guys. It's fabric. So I'm going to work. Please stay tuned. So in the process of getting my assignment and figuring out that I just had stuff sitting around, I decided to use something that I already had. That's just stockpiling in some of my craft drawers or either that things I bought and I never ever used. So I'm using some old boxes like fragrance boxes, things that were left over when we purchased paper from an office store or some old fabric that was left over from a previous DIY. Now, my supply list is basically Mod Podge, but a lot of this is simply just optional items. So what I have here is, of course, fabric. You can use fleece or felt, depending on what's in your inventory. You'll need scissors, a hot glue gun, or any fabric adhesives, anything that will stick fabric to a box you can use. You can also use decorative trims, studs, Got any bling on a roll? I'm pretty sure lots of you do when you've been shopping, thought you were going to use it for the holidays and did not. Buttons, gems, old jewelry, and then pick up some of those clips that you have lying in your desk drawer and use those to hold the fabric in place. And that's it for the supply list. Now this office supply box has turned into an adorable nightstand chest. Now this step is consistent for all of the boxes that I'm working on. You cut the fabric lengthwise so that it wraps completely around the box. You only want to have one seam on the corner. Next, you want to use your clips and clip the fabric to the box. You want to have about an inch and a half folding over the top of the box and you want to have about two inches to three inches on the bottom of the box. And once again, this is the same step for all of the boxes. I want a secured corner. So I'm going to finish the edge of this fabric by adding hot glue to the fold and then secure the fold to the corner of the box. Now to secure that, your fabric doesn't slip, you place it over the edge of the box, take your clip, put it on, hold it tightly. And now all I have to do is add my glue. Take advantage to using these clips. Just flip this back when I'm ready to turn the box over and it'll lay flat. Now you always want to work from opposites, so we're going to work from the opposite side, securing it down the same way. Definitely time for another glue gun. Now if you'll notice, I placed the clamps along the corners for the long side of the box. In other words, this is the front and that's the back. So now I can do the corners like so to glue them down and I'll have more of an upholstery styled look on that corner of my box. Now this is the best way to secure the fabric to the top. You want to start in the center of the side. Pretend you are doing upholstery on a chair and then hold. Now once that's fully secure, you want to move on to your corners. And if you want, you can add the clamp back to hold it in place. So you go over to your corner I'm going to start with this one here, yeah. 
and you start closer to the box with putting on your glue. Don't remove the clamp just yet and you hold it down. That way, once you start to trim away all the excess, you don't have to worry about the fabric coming away from the box. And then you start on the next layer in. Again, don't trim anything yet. Press down and hold that piece in place. If you'll notice, you still have one more layer to go, and that's this layer. Place the fabric, sorry, place the glue here inside the seam and hold it down. And that's how you're going to secure all of the corners all the way around. You will not have to add any glue to these corners. Just leave that as is. It's a box. So I just want to show you how that rise rises up a little bit. Oops, glue came off. But you can see how that stays in place. Now I am going to leave the clamps on the lid until it is fully dry. That hot glue will be hard, so I want to make sure that nothing slips away from the box. Now I am going to add felt around the edges and the bottom of this box. And I am completely out of it, but I wanted to go ahead and get the box done so you would be able to see a really cool project. Now let me show you how I'm applying the stud. I have my grandmother's thimble on my finger. I place the stud on top of the fabric. And as you can see, I've marked the center and I press in. Did you hear that going inside? Okay, good. I press in and I go ahead and press down here a little bit more and it's in. Now, those little teeth that were on there need to be pressed in. So what you have to do is just simply just rub on the inside around that area. And I'm using my thimble and this is actually securing them for me. It's bending those teeth inward and that's it. I love it. Now this box looks stunning on the shelf of this nightstand. These are bodega storage boxes and they are two smaller boxes. But I am quite pleased with how this turned out. I might add a few more studs and call it a day. Besides, I have to make one more when I get another box. Now this is cabinet hardware. It's an agate stone. I got it from Hobby Lobby some time ago and I never completed that DIY. So I'm going to use this to actually be the focal point of my little box, which is going to be placed on a shelf in my husband's office slash library. I'm simply going to add a little glue, put one of the gold studs right there to cover that hole, and that's it. Now I do have some brown tassels that I'm going to add underneath the stone a little bit later. I purchased those at an antique mall, an entire box of them. Now there is a slight similarity to this box. It's called the Geo Box and it sells for $79. Now I have seen faux fur lunch boxes already headed back to school. So let's just step it up a notch and give a future little diva a faux fur storage box for all of her little trinkets and accessories. And if not that, then you can make it an actual gift box for your little diva. So when you are giving her a Christmas present or birthday present, then dress it up in a beautiful faux fur box. Now remember to check out DIY Buddy. I have a video now over there concerning bras, bra fittings, styles, and accessories. Remember to check out my blog as well. I will be updating that with additional items surrounding this collab challenge. Now, I would like to thank you for stopping by. If you are not a subscriber, please consider doing so today. When you subscribe via mobile phone, remember to turn on your notifications. It's an instant message that flashes on your phone just for a second. And if you subscribe via the internet, you will need to turn on your notifications by clicking the cog wheel, which is the little wheel right next to the word subscribe and then turning on your notifications. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed the video and remember to check the information box of this video to find additional links 
for Patricia's channel as well as for today's video in our partnership. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.